Welcome to my super wacky game room tour! <laughs> yeah! Hmm... I don't know how to do this. Hi guys! Welcome to my crazy game room tour! Not really though! I've never wanted to actually make a game room tour in this house, even though you guys ask for it all the time, because this room is really small. There wasn't a room in this house that was good for a game room, so this is what I ended up working with. It's like... Three steps, <laughs> and uh, it's so small that even though I've stacked everything as high as I can in here, I still have like a second game room in here, Kim, if you want to show. Oh, and thanks again to Kim for filming this video. She's using the tiny baby camera, not sure how it's going to go because this thing weighs like the weight of an actual baby, and her hand would get, or her hands would get too tired trying to hold it. Come in. Come in. This is literally like boxes and boxes of extra games and magazines and random stuff from Australia. There's a ton of consoles stacked up in there. And then, and I won't bother showing you, although you can see how tiny this area is because this is all my filming equipment, the table that we film the table videos at. In that room is like a second storage room filled with more games and another closet filled with more games. I need more space. <laughs> I need like seven more of these shelves, but hey, I'm working with what I got, and you guys wanted this, and I'm still in California, still looking for easy videos to make, so this is what you got. I do my best to blur out the backgrounds of my videos because I like that look where I'm in focus. I'll stand here, usually, and my lights will be here and the camera will be literally right here. And I do that so that everything back here is blurred. I like that contrast. I don't want it to be all in focus because it's too busy on the eyes. So everyone's like, I want to see what's behind you. This is what's behind me. All of this is Switch. My Switch collectibles and then obviously the Switch games are down here. If you want to see my Switch stuff, you, there's a whole video that I made on every single thing in my Switch collection and it's pretty recent. There's only going to be like a few new games that I bought recently. I think maybe one new collector edition that is Fury. And honestly, I got that in a video that I'm doing soon on the channel anyway. So we're not going to bother with Switch stuff today. You've seen it. Here it is. It's all over the place. You want a more in-depth look? Watch that video. What I'm going to show you is the thing that I like the most about my game room. Why am I still holding my camera? What I like most about this game room, despite its size, is it's actually a mishmash of my Australian collection and my North American collection. As a lot of you know, I'm Australian, hence the weird funky accent, and I collected a lot of games in Australia, cut to that first game room tour I did years ago. This is my game room. The only Atari cut that I have is ET. And most of that stuff I kept, and it's here. And if you want to start with the retro stuff, all of this here is my Mega Drive collection. Not even Genesis, my Mega Drive collection. Pretty much every single game in here was gonna say Mega Drive. There is a bunch that, that are gonna say Genesis that I maybe I bought here. But for the most part, there's like 80-ish Mega Drive games between the boxed ones, which there's a ton, and then there's loose ones somewhere. Oh yeah, stacked to heck up in that cube. And then again, with the NES stuff, most of this is gonna be, well, it's, it's about a split of Australian and American NES games. They're all just kind of mishmashed in there with no rhyme or reason. Same goes for the Super Nintendo. You guys never get to see this. It's crammed down here. My Dreamcast games, which you'll notice are in big, big, uh, I don't know what you call them. They're not the jewel case, the bigger, bigger jewel cases, I guess. But they, I prefer the look of these. A bunch of Saturn games, some imports, a bunch of PAL PlayStation games. I'm just gonna get B-roll shots of all of this. I'm not gonna go through every game. There's a lot of things that have a lot of meaning to me. Um, Symphony of the Night being one of my favorite PlayStation 1 games. Don't know where that's hiding right now. Uh, Croc 2 was one of my absolutely, absolute favorite PlayStation 1 games when I was growing up. And then we have my tiny Xbox section, which has actually been growing quite a bit since I got an Xbox One X. Um, now I'm holding a Keyblade. This was a gift from a fan, by the way. Thank you. I'm out of breath. We actually leave for California in like five hours and we've had no sleep. We're doing our best here. <laughs> Thanks again to Kim. PlayStation, again, I love PlayStation. I, I like making PlayStation videos. I just have kind of ran out of things to talk about on the system other than maybe more VR games, but I feel like most people don't care about VR anymore. Maybe I'm wrong. 
but as you can see, I probably have more PlayStation... Well, I don't know, because they're bigger. But I have just as many PlayStation 4 games as I do Switch, because I love my PlayStation 4 e almost equally to my Switch. There's nothing really that special I want to highlight. Um, there's some imports and stuff like that, but I mean, I'll again, film B-roll and you can see for yourself. You guys never really get to see the right-hand side of my games here. You, you literally, in the videos, you see to this shelf and then kind of about to here. So you don't really ever see the Zelda stuff and yeah, here's my Zelda shrine. It looked a lot more impressive when I first moved in because I had all my amiibos pinned up here. And as you can see, there's two sole survivors. The rest have slowly fallen off. The little hooks I put them on weren't strong enough. Um, it looked really cool before. Now it's just white space. I'm, I'm working on it. But it was Zelda memorabilia, ton of stuff from fans. And again, I can't say thank you enough to you guys. Uh, and then cubes here just with the games and then some memorabilia behind it, maybe some statues. Again, this is B-roll for everything. Um, Ocarina, an actual Ocarina, which I tried to play the other day again, and I still can't. And the Zelda stuff goes all the way down to here. And then where it cuts off, we have a bunch of PAL and American Wii games spliced up. You can tell the PAL ones because they have these big colorful M ratings or G ratings on the side of them. The, uh, the, the, what do you call those? Peggy rate? I don't know. Peggy 18. That's a thing, right? Peggy 18. And then these are the PAL PlayStation games, which you can tell very clearly by their very boring spines. I have always hated collecting PAL PlayStation games because I feel like they just look so boring. But I have the ones that I really liked when I was collecting. These were the games that I really wanted to play, have in my collection. There's a ton of Devil May Cry stuff from special editions to sealed Devil May Cry's. I wanted to get them all. Huge fan of the series, obviously. Most recently, I, I, me I mentioned this in a video, but Kim bought me a Turbo Man doll. Thank you again, Kim. I love it. And then over here, we have a, t a ton of retro stuff. These are probably some of my most expensive retro games. I don't really, I never really cared all that much for collecting ex expensive games unless they were ones I really wanted. Um, this is Kim's childhood copy of Snow Bros. And also her childhood copy of Yoshi's Island, which was the game that we had our first conversation ever about. Aw, aren't we cute? Hey, and then uh, Final Fantasy, uh, one of, probably one of my best finds in the wild in Australia, a PAL version, obviously PAL because it was Australia, of Super Metroid. I very often talk about the two GameCube games I had when I was a kid being the only games in my collection still that were actually my games from when I was a kid, Lost Kingdoms 1 and 2. Well, I never actually mentioned this. The Three Skulls of the Toltecs one, is one of the games that got me into Point and click adventure games, I forgot the word for it. Point and click adventure games, and this was my actual copy. I don't know how I still have this. Because when I left home, um, didn't really get a choice. I didn't get to take anything either. And I managed to sneak out of the house my two GameCube games. This, I don't know how I got this back. I, I honestly don't know, but I'm so happy about it. Because it's obviously something you do not find, unless you're just buying it. I, I doubt it's expensive, but it's something you don't find. And it's a really good point click adventure game that nobody talks about. Metal Storm is up here. Turtles Tournament Fighters. Um, I have Action 52 downstairs. I'll get shots of that later. Behind my computer desk where I edit, I have three IKEA shelves, which you're seeing right now, but they're downstairs. And they're full of my, my uh, collectibles, my statues, my Panasonic Q, which is the gem of my collection, which is why it sits behind me where I can monitor it all day and make sure no one's stealing it. Who looks drunk? Yeah, I don't know. This guy? Kim made me, well, actually, you made this, and I stole it, because I liked it. Um, yeah, because you were going to sell it, and then I was like, nah. Oh. And then I was going to buy it, but then we decided to go and get married, and then it was like, well, what's the point now? It's the same money. Helpful tip, don't marry an artist so you don't have to buy art. I know. And then you just steal it. Oh, this is probably the most expensive game in my collection. I can't be bothered pulling it out. Uh, it's StarCraft 64 in box. It's the PAL version, which can run upwards of like $1,000. That one probably wouldn't because it's missing the manual and the box is a little beat up and the label is a little ripped, but still a very expensive game. For the last generation of systems, Xbox 360 was by far my favorite system. Um, I'd probably say even more than the Wii U just because it had games and I really enjoyed playing games on it. And these are all my 360 games, and every single one is PAL because I bought more than all the games I ever wanted while the 360 was current, and then when I moved, it was 
game over. Yeah, I mean, I really have much to say about it, but I really love this collection. And I think a reason why I love this collection the most is because there's probably more than 100 Xbox 360 games here, which is obviously up there with like my Mega Drive and my Switch collection and how many titles I have. But I know for a fact that I have played and finished 95% of these 360 games. I just love the 360. I really adored that system and I had a load of fun with it. And I'm just, I'm looking at these right now, trying to find one I didn't finish. And it's probably just gonna be like Hannah Montana the movie, and like random things like that, Beijing Olympics. But as far as games games, yeah, I finished them all. I love that system. I love getting achievements. I think my gamer score is like 60,000. Probably not that big to some of you, but that's purely just from 360. I actually installed these shelves myself um, not bragging about it, they're really janky. Um, and then anytime I get a statue out or a box out or whatever, I throw it up there. That pillow is one of my favorite things, actually, that Kim made me for my birthday? I don't remember. I think it was your birthday. Chris I think it was Christmas. But yeah, that's where my boxes go. And then this is a really cool wall scroll that I would like to get tattooed one day, but it's pretty insane. This, if you guys remember the standee that got destroyed in the flood, a lot of people were like, at least take Link off and salvage him. I never actually showed you guys, but I did. Thanks for the advice. Uh, so he salvaged up there. And then finally, this sits behind my camera while I film. It is my little Smash Brothers area. And it's made me want to collect Amiibos more. Believe it or not, I don't consider myself an Amiibo collector. I say that with that many Amiibos behind me. But as we all know, there's probably about five times more than this in existence. These are just ones that I found cheap as I've been going. Or maybe there were ones I really wanted so I found a way to buy them. Like this Metroid pack that has the little Metroid in it. I needed that. There was a couple like that, but for the most part, I just happened to amass this collection, but I've sectioned them off like you have Splatoon cubes, you have a Metroid cube, even have Metroid Samus Returns sat with it. You have like an old school cube with some retro stuff, Bayonetta, Pokemon, Star Fox, Mario Odyssey, you get the theme. It's just my little Smash Brothers area. I think it's adorable and it sits behind me in every one of my videos. Like literally the camera is like here and I'm standing here. So I get to look at it. And you guys don't. Oh, some of you might be, well actually there's a miracle piano behind here. And this big guy that you made me. Kim made me a lot of stuff stuff. Stuff stuff. Miracle piano, I found on Christmas with my friend Super Derek one year. Actually have a whole Game Quest episode about it. It's probably too much, we should leave it here. Christmas miracle, I think I caught it for those Game Quest watchers. I don't know what I'm, I'm missing out on here. I know there's like a, a ton of, again, there's like whole systems I'm stashed away. Some of you might be thinking, well, where's your retro setup? That's actually in the other room in bits and pieces, just because we haven't decided if we're setting it up in that room or we're making that a music room. We don't know, honestly. We haven't even had time to think about it since we moved in here. But I, all my consoles, and I would, I kind of want to take you in there to prove that I'm not lying, but literally, like, my consoles, my top loader, everything's on the floor. I'll just get B-roll of it. Why do I keep forgetting that's a thing I can do? I'll get B-roll. You're seeing it right now. Vita stashed in here. Anyone remember when I loved the Vita? Here's the uh, American PS2 games. Look a lot more colorful, a lot prettier. PlayStation 3, PSP, I don't know. What do you want from me? I collect for pretty much every system, or at least I did for a while. I would not call myself a retro collector anymore. I've completely fallen out of the hobby. Game Boy Advance, even some PC stuff, even some out of country Super Nintendo Famicom games. There's a little bit of everything in this house, whether it's on the actual shelves or again in the closets. There's a little bit of, ev of everything. One of my most recent Metro pickups was Chrono Trigger. Bought that bad boy uh, at Retro Palooza. Final Fantasies, Skies of Arcadia. Like literally, if you actually look, which it's hard to do because there's so much junk everywhere. I've crammed in little nuggets of like gaming history all over the place. And uh, I just really, I, I like the organized mess of it all. I like looking at it like a, a Waldo puzzle and you can look over here like 10 times and you won't see Wily Wars on the Mega Drive. And then like the 10th time you look, you're like, is that Wily Wars on Mega Drive? Pretty hard game to find. My voice went really weird there. I don't know, it's really late at night and I'm just I'm just doing this for a quick video. I don't know what I'm doing, I'm losing my mind now. Anyone watch Pixel Squad, Aaron and Ricky? Uh, Riff and Ri Rex, Riff and Ricky? Legitimately, I'm so out of it right now, I can't remember. Uh, this was Ricky's Virtual Boy. It was like 20 bucks. 
Uh, this was my Assassin's Creed statue from Australia. We have a Super Nintendo from Australia in the box, Mega Drive in box, Mega Drive 2 in box, again, all Australian, Back to the Future hoverboard. It's just, it's just stuff, man. It's just stuff. So this is what, this is essentially it, you know? I'm not gonna go through everything. I don't care enough. There's pops here. I don't know, do you like pops? I don't. I just get them sometimes. Some of them are cool. Back to the Future, Wrestling, Home Alone, other stuff. Preacher's a good show, My Hero Academia. No, no, just, just buy, it just, just happens. It just turns up in my house. Kim buys a lot of them. And then they end up there. Uh, it's not that, <laughs> not that exciting. Um, Jordan edited this video, so hopefully he, he worked some magic and made this actually interesting. Thanks, Jordan. Other than that, yeah, this was literally me panicking last second before we leave, trying to get something up for you guys so YouTube algorithm doesn't forget that I exist. I hope you enjoyed this regardless. The one thing I did want to show you guys was, was pretty much just the stuff you don't get to see usually when I film, and I think you've pretty much seen it. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Smash like if you did. Comment down below with what your favorite thing in my collection is. The hair flip all over that subscribe button. I'm... I'm... I don't... I don't know.